G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, back for the fifth and final match of this Pauper League. We're versing our Magic player friend again. We versed this player in the third match, and they were on Burn. Um, this, this hand is capable. I don't think it's amazing, though. Probably ditch one Abundant Growth. Get into it. So there we see the Mountain, the Swiss Spear, the attack. Realistically, in B to Burn, what you want is your Armadillo Cloak for that life gain. And, uh, well, there you go. There you have it. It's that easy, guys. Just just draw like me, and you'll have a good time against Burn. Now what we really need is just that third land so we can cast Armadillo Cloak. <laughs> All right, so opponent with Lava Spike, Prowess Trigger. So we're down to 16 now. I'm assuming another one mana Burn spell. Maybe Skewer the Critics. Maybe not. Alright, and attacking for 2 damage. No blocks on our end. What's, what's this one doing? Rift Bolt on Suspend. Oh, hello. Hello, Armadillo Cloak. Nice of you to join. No shortage of life gain around here, I'll tell you that much. Alright, the Utopia Sprawl. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think that's worthwhile. <laughs> so we'll be like one turn off of doing anything relevant with our creature. But now we've got guaranteed three mana next turn for Armadillo Cloak for gaining three life. And, you know, that's pretty close to us winning the match at that point. So Rift Bolt off suspend for the opponent. Puts us to 11. Prowess on the Swift Spear. Main deck, I'm not scared about any board sweepers, and, like, it's possible you should play Kato, you should play around it, but I, I, I know this person's more of a conventional burn list rather than the experimental synthesizer value version, um, but I don't think you should be playing around a main deck sweeper in a, in a burn list because it just doesn't grow their creatures enough, in my opinion. And the festivities is probably the best one they could have. As you can see, attacking for three... So it's another Rift Bolt on Suspend. No. Opponent has a run out of stuff to do. Alright, so we'll um, Dillo Cloak. And that's going to be an attack for 3 now. Putting us back up to 9. Opponent has to have spells in hand because they didn't make their third land drop. Unless they're slow rolling their mana. And our opponent concedes the game. Alright, look at that. <laughs> Alright, so this is in the festivities, so you guys can all see. Um, one damage to each opponent, each creature and planeswalker they control. Um, fits pretty well into the burn deck, really. Reminder as well, guys, if you find this video entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing for more action like this. So we're going to bring in Crimson Acolyte, protection from bread, gives it that protection from that effect. Um... From the end, the festivities, from Electric Array. I'm going to bring in Ram through, taking out one mask. And with that, we'll submit the list, getting back into it. Not much that we have to do there. All right, so we're on the draw. We see this hand. Honestly, I think this is a keep. If, if this wasn't Crystal Grotto and we weren't on the draw, I don't think I'd be keeping it. The opponent miles to six. Good start for us. A lot of the time, we don't want to play a turn one creature into them as well anyway, because it gets hit by a turn two and the festivity. So we'll wait until turn two to play our creature, plus like a one mana aura, because their sweeping effects are sorcery speed. So Swift Spear from the opponent on their six card hand, attacking for two, uh, attacking for one, pardon me. And the first draw, and Crystal Grotto trigger. Okay, not looking so hot so far. Alrighty. Am I too greedy here? I don't think so. I think the upside's high enough, and you're up a game, so it's probably fine. Alright, so opponent plays Voldarian Epicure. Attacking for one. We'll go ahead and take the damage. <laughs> sure thing. Are you kidding me, deck? Okay, this is awkward. <laughs> we have a free discard. Perfect. 
You can't get us, Jack. We've got the tech. <laughs> all right. In all honesty, we are in a pretty bad spot here. All right. So opponent with lightning bolt now. Prowess trigger. And another lightning bolt. I mean, like, any land we hit, we can then, like, filter green for commune. And we can play from there. Um, I think we're a little bit unfortunate. Three cards... After a scry to not get there, so we go to seven. Okay, well, our deck doesn't want to do it for us, but we'll just uh, resubmit and get into game three while being on the play, um, and we will mull more aggressively um, from dodgy one landers like that. All right, so our seven looks rubbish. So we'll mulligan. This looks a lot better. We'll keep. So we can filter to white mana here, and we're still a while away from casting Armadillo Cloak, but it's not too bad. Could be worse. I think we just ignore Crimson Acolyte this game. Maybe not. We have Trample and Armadillo Cloak. God, it's almost so greedy ditching Acolyte here. I th think it's feasible, though. All right. Hopefully, <laughs> that doesn't blow us out. Oh, wait. No, no, no. This is wrong. Because they can turn one festivities, and then we don't have a second creature. So I should have kept, kept it. Um, Epicure. So we don't get punished. I'm sort of fortunate there. We, we should be keeping the Acolyte. Um... All right, so this time, Grotto, Scry 1, Scrying Mana to top. That is not mana. We already have one of you. Do you kindly move to the bottom of our library? Attack for two. All right, opponent plays their second land drop here. And we see a Chain Lightning. I'm not going to be recasting that one. And that is a Roof Bolt on Suspend. So our life total fairly intact. Uh, Epicure can't attack into us. Commune with spirits. Right, library, right. Alright, we'll commune. Like, we just want to hit mana for resolving cloak. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we do hit mana. It was almost a whiff. Attack for three. So that'll put our opponent to 15. Upkeep, Rift Bolt puts us to 13. And trigger. Oh, oh what's this? Is our opponent uh, looting with the blood token? That seems okay by my book. Lightning Bolt face. And passing to us. Alright, so I guess we'll scry for free. That can go on the bottom. One, two, and three. It's probably a concede from our opponent because that's five life a turn, back up to 15. And our opponent concedes. So three and two. Um, so I think the main deck felt a lot cleaner than what it did last league when we were trying to splash for blue mana for the Cartouche of Knowledge. And by splash, I mean having the exact same land base we have here, um, but just extending ourselves to that third color. Um, I, I was finding it was making my white auras a little bit clunkier to resolve from our hand when we're having to grotto for blue. And if we didn't have the green aura, the white auras felt kind of bad. So, uh, that was a pretty good league. Um, three and two. Uh, a win against Corgates, a loss against Corgates, and a loss against a white red, but primarily white ephemerate deck. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think the main deck was in a good place. Uh, maybe the sideboard calls to question a little bit more. I think it could be possible to finally say goodbye to Scattershot Archer. I just don't think I'm seeing enough fairies to warrant it. I think if I'm dropping it to two copies, I'm removing it altogether because for the fairies matchup, it has to be in your opening hand or it's not worth it. 
So as mentioned before, I think uh, Crucifix's Insight is a reasonable sideboard card to be bringing in. It's good into those attrition matchups that have Dawnbring and Cleric and uh, really, really test your card draw and your, your value and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I think Relic's still okay. Sort of like a little bit suspect on Ram through. I think I want to drop Ram through to one. And then I'll look to bring back in the Standard Bearer. Um... That really would have been a big, big help in the Core Gates matchup, and we just didn't see it. Um, turning off their Basilisk Gate would be absolutely huge. Um, but yeah, I think this is a better split after just hoping that we don't verse Fairies and accepting that if we do verse it, we'll probably lose. Um, Ramthru could potentially be Gut Shot. There's times when I want Gut Shot, but Ramthru is also good into these Fog decks because it's a way to deal damage to them in response to the Fog, so that's something to consider, but also consideration is not overboarding. So as it is, I think I want to keep our Graveyard Hate of Relic of Progenitus in there for a little while longer, um, especially while Ephemerate Tron is such a big thing. It's also got that applicability against Familiars. Um, decks like that that reoccur cards from the graveyard. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the list and the league down below in the comment section. Till next time, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you then.